Yes, it is three o'clock in the morning. I have tried to make this video like four times now. And I don't know if it's the vernal equinox or the fact that we had a full moon a couple days ago or what's going on. But my pets have interrupted this every single time. So I'm setting you up to expect it this time. That way I can just make the video and if they show up, none of us will be upset about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to give you an update on my hot, hot peppers. They're doing beautifully. Um, I've said it before, but I, I've, I love hot peppers. Hot peppers take a long time to get started and they also need to mature on the plant and change their to their final color to get all that good heat. And especially for seed saving, uh, for me to have plants that are um, mature enough at the end of the season for me to save seeds for the next year. So I give them a head start. Also, this particular year, I just have a smaller growing space. So it was good for me to start my hot, hot peppers early get them a head start, get them up potted and out of the way and just into natural light so that I can start other things. So I've done my tomatoes. Um, this is just a whole tray of promises. Look at all that hope. That's the hope of 48 cells of like 100 tomato plants. Isn't that beautiful? We'll see how that goes. Uh, these peppers have already been up potted once. I'll give them another two weeks and then I'll up pot them to their final destination, which will be um, 12 inch pots, three gallon buckets and or five gallon grow bags, depending on how big uh, root space they need. Each variety is a little bit different. These ones are in the original seed trays. Some of these taller ones are ready to be topped and transplanted so that they're not shading out the smaller ones and then I have these young ones that were sown three weeks after the rest because I didn't have germination the first time around here's some more young ones and there's some back here as well and they'll just stay right where they are and continue getting established okay let's talk about the the peppers I'm growing this year that aren't three four five x hot peppers and also the eggplants, because I'm going to start those at the same time. Look at this. I can't even sit down. They're everywhere. They're coming out of the woodwork, y'all. Madness. Okay, let's begin with eggplant. I'm going to start with this little adorable patio variety, Little Prince Eggplant. It'll grow a few feet tall. It'll need to be staked. I can grow it in a 12-inch pot. And they'll produce fruits that are only three or four inches. I'm excited about that. Rosa Bianca. They produce round eggplants as opposed to the elongated or teardrop shaped ones we're generally accustomed to. Bride, which is an open pollinated variety I got from Asian Garden to Table, one of my favorite YouTube channels and seed shops. AsianGardenToTable.com, number two you see there at the bottom. That's Regine and her family. Regine runs a seed shop. It's a family-owned business. She has a wonderful YouTube channel where she teaches planting techniques and recipes, Asian recipes. And she's uh, just awesome. If you've never visited their YouTube channel or their seed shop online, I highly recommend them. I grow several of their things. In fact, sitting right next to my bride seeds is a packet of bok choy that I'm also growing at the moment that I got from their site. The seed packets are always very generous. The prices are good. There's tons of germination information and planting information on here in Chinese and English. So good for everybody. Okay, so I'm going to get those bride ones. These are going to be white and purple streaked. So it looks like It'll be really pretty. And Casper, which is new to me variety. White flesh uh, and white skin. 
Okay, there's one hot, hot pepper that I got in a seed swap after I had planted the ones I just showed you. Mini white habanero. Um, this could be called Yucatan white habanero or sometimes Peruvian white habanero. It's a low-growing capsicum, capsicum chinense variety in the habanero family, but the fruits are small and as hot, if not hotter, than a typical habanero. I'm very excited to grow this plant. And the pictures of it are gorgeous. It just looks like a beautiful ornamental plant as well as a prolific fruiter. So I'm excited about that. Jalapenos are a workhorse in my garden and I need a lot of them. In fact, I, I just didn't plant as many last year as I should have. And I pickled or froze what I had, what I didn't eat fresh. And I'm already out and it's only... It's not even the end of March yet. I've run out. So I'm going to plant more. <laughs> I use a lot of jalapenos in my cooking. So I'm going to grow the mammoth jalapeno for the first time and compare it to the Greg's Grande, Craig's Grande jalapeno and see which one of them grows bigger. Because I want a nice, big, substantial jalapeno that I can make, uh, you know, pepper poppers. I'm going to grow the orange spice again. I will say that I had a very healthy, productive plant, but none of my peppers were big. None of them. The plant itself produced, so it wasn't a plant issue. It wasn't uh, growing conditions or anything limiting it. The, the growing conditions were ideal. They just were not very big. So these little misleading, you know, big old peppers, yeah, I didn't get those. I got the little tiny ones. <laughs> and then the lemon jalapeno, which will ripen to yellow, I'm going to grow because Joe over at Garden State Gardener, he grew these last year and he swears by them and uh, he showed off his beautiful crop and I was like, okay, we'll eat the rainbow. I will grow red, orange, and yellow jalapenos this year. And I added this to the mix, the Caligaritza pepper, because even though they look like a Lesia pepper, which I'll talk about in a minute, they're actually the same or similar heat profile to a jalapeno. So I'm going to grow these and see if I like them. They should have thicker walls. And I like the shape and I like the color. So we'll see how they taste. I've never tried these before. Okay, now I've got a couple of long varieties the cowhorn pepper is not very hot, and it just grows long and slender like a cayenne. But this puppy, look at this beautiful Thunder Mountain Longhorn Pepper. That plant is going to grow about four feet, and the fruit could be over a foot long. And they'll turn red and get nice and hot, and it's going to make a great pepper powder. It's going to look beautiful in a, in a stir fry or mixed into a... Uh, a seven layered bean dip or nachos or I got all kinds of plans for this. So I'm very excited about the Thunder Mountain Longhorn Peppers that I got from Dee over at Garden of Deedon in a seed swap with her. Pasilla Bajio. I have wanted to grow these for a few years. I just did not buy the seeds and dedicate the space. This year I did both. Ancho Poblano, one of my other favorite workhorse peppers. Man, these things get huge, and the plants will produce a lot if you take care of them. So I'm going to grow some Ancho Poblanos. I like to make chili relleno, and these are the best peppers for that. Large Red Hot Cherry, never grown these before. I got this packet in my MI Gardener grab bag at the end of the season. Going to give those a shot for the first time. An Anaheim Pepper. Not just any Anaheim pepper. This was locally grown by an organic farmer in the Shenandoah Valley. And I bought a huge collection of these Anaheims while they were still green at the Shenandoah Valley produce auction. And I canned a bunch of them. I ate a bunch of them. And then I let the rest uh, age and uh, so that I could save seed from them. And I got an enormous pile of seeds from the ripe Anaheim peppers. So many 
that this isn't even all that I have. So if you leave a comment and would like 10 free Anaheim CDs, or seeds, CDs, seeds, I'm going to give 10 free Anaheim seeds away to the first five people who ask for them in the comments, okay? Because look at all I have. There's no way I can ever grow that many. But they were beautiful plants. Um, you can pick them green or you can let them grow red. I think the longest one was like eight inches, close to eight, close to nine inches. They averaged about six or seven inches long. It was just a lot of fruit. They're beautiful. Jimmy Nardello. I've never actually grown a Jimmy Nardello. I've wanted to for a while. Finally going to do it this year. Paprika pepper. So I can make my own paprika powder. This is the Alma paprika pep pepper. Sweet banana peppers. Um, I don't eat many of these. They're a little thin-walled for me as, if, as far as a sweet pepper. And for most of the uses that people use a sweet banana pepper, I actually prefer a hot pepper. But I have relatives who love these. So I'm going to go ahead and plant several of these to give away for my relatives' gardens. A good grilling pepper, Ashvarsky. Blushing Cheeks. This came to me from Garden State Gardener as well as part of his Seed of the Month Club. If you don't know, Garden State Gardener, that's Joe. He has a Seed of the Month Club. And for a $5 donation via Venmo or PayPal, uh, he'll send five pre-selected varieties in his Seed of the Month Club. I got this particular variety. It It's not a lipstick pepper. A lipstick pepper is a different um, variety, but they look like a lipstick pepper on the internet. I couldn't find a lot of information about the Blushing Cheeks variety, so I'm going to go ahead and try them and just see what happens. Because I like the lipstick pepper. They're kind of like these, but thicker walls and probably sweeter. The sweetest right here, Lesia pepper, my favorite pepper. So I'm growing more of these. If you've never grown a Lesia pepper, you owe it to yourself to try one. And now let's get into the sweet bell peppers, the traditional bell peppers. I'm going to eat the rainbow. I'm going to grow one chocolate bell pepper. I'm going to regrow an Atiuda. That's an orange bell that I loved. I got the original seeds from Baker Creek. These are seeds that I saved. I got this Sunbright Sweet Pepper in my MI Gardener end of season grab bag. Gonna grow those. So I have a yellow pepper. I'm gonna try this Chinese Giant. Um, these were on sale at Dollar General. This is a, a, a series of, they have a whole displaced case of this Ford Hook Farm Heirlooms brand. But what caught my attention was that second line. This flavorsome heirloom was the largest bell pepper of its day. Dark green to red fruits are four to six inches long. I'm always looking for a good, uh, uh, big pepper to do stuffed peppers or just to eat raw. And I don't want the dinky minky ones that you get at the grocery store. I want to grow a nice, big, substantial one. So I'm going to try this variety to see if it'll grow bigger. I've tried the California Wonder. I've tried the YOLO Wonder. I've tried the King of the North. That one did okay. But I still felt like, no, nah, it's not quite It's not quite what I'm looking for. I think, I, I think there's a way to grow a bigger pepper. So I'm going to try this variety. But I also got a Nikotovka Seeds before they had to close because of the war. Nikotovka is a Ukrainian seed company that I love. I adore them. I'm praying for them. I'm praying that they don't lose their home, their business, their lives, and all the people in the Ukraine right now. This company is fantastic. If you've never shopped from them before, you can't today. Today is it's March 21st now. We're in the vernal equinox, and their website is down, and their business is temporarily closed. Thanks, Russia. But... As soon as you can get on there, and as soon as you can make a purchase, please support them. They're wonderful. Their packets are very informative. 
Their seed quantities are very generous. Their prices are very fair. And their selection, especially for anybody growing north of the Mason-Dixon, is astonishing. So that brings me to this particular sweet pepper, Midnight Dreams. Look at that beautiful black. It's like a purple black when it's ripe. So I'm going to grow that in addition to the red and the orange and the yellow. I also got three other pepper varieties from them. The Sweet Rotenda, which is a ribbed variety. Short, squat, stocky, thick wall sweet pepper. The Dumas variety, which I just couldn't believe it when I looked at that. It looks like it's growing in clusters. Look at how much fruit is on that plant. Holy moly. So I just bought it because of the picture. <laughs> I'm going to try it and see. And then this one, because it might satisfy my itch for a nice, big, ripe, red bell pepper. It's called the Whopper Yunnan. If it's called Whopper, that's a good sign. And you can't really tell on this picture, but that's a grown person's hand holding three of those and balancing them on their wrist and fingertips. That's how big those peppers are. And the website said they grow four inches, but that looks more like the, you know, the description of the Chinese giant that could be five or six inches even. So we're going to give it a shot. Anyway, that's what I'm growing this year. If you would like some free Anaheim peppers, leave a comment. The first five people who ask for them will get them. And also let me know what kind of varieties you're growing, what you like to do with your peppers, and I'm always interested in learning. So if you have tips on maximizing yield or growing situations that have worked for you in the past that you'd like to recommend, please leave a comment and help to educate the rest of us. Also, if you have any links to your own videos about your peppers or anything else you're growing in your garden, feel free to drop those. I'll leave a link in the description so you can see what tomatoes I'm growing and what hot peppers I'm growing. And as always, I'm learning a lot. I'm sharing it here. And I hope you'll come grow with me. Bye.